So today we're going to be going over all 27 masterwork weapons in Anthem and talk about how good they are and what they do. Just as a PSA, I don't have experience with all of these weapons. I have about nine in total of these, but from looking on Reddit and what other people have said about the other guns, as well as asking my own subscribers, we've managed to get a bit of info on each of the weapons. So this video is just there to tell you which of the masterwork weapons are really good and which ones are actually pretty bad. We could maybe go into more detail on some of the specific weapon types in the game and their masterworks, or even looking at ability masterworks and components if you like. Let me know what you'd like to see and compared in future videos in the comments below. Before we get started, it's worth adding that some of these masterwork effects that we'll describe only apply to the weapon that the perk is on, whereas some of them apply to your suit as a whole. To give you a brief example, we'll start with heavy pistols first, and we'll start with Avenging Herald. A weapon that people are saying is the best in the game. Its masterwork perk is when you hover in the air, it increases your weapon damage by 200%. Now this is a perk that applies to your javelin, regardless of whether you have this weapon in your hands using it or whether it's holstered. So long as you have it equipped on your suit, that effect will apply every time that you hover. However, there are some perks that only apply to that weapon. Taking a look at Divine Vengeance, which is an assault rifle, that perk causes fire explosions with every third weak point hit. This only applies to that weapon. If you holster that weapon and use another one, that won't cause large fire explosions, right? So some of these are very confusing. Some apply to your suit as a whole. Some are very specific to the weapon that you're using. But going back on track, the heavy pistol, Avenging Herald, as I said, increases your weapon damage by 200%. Out of the three, Avenging Herald does the most base damage but has the slowest RPM and is definitely one of the better weapons in the game. Some would even say it is the best gun in the game. It's amazing for Storms and Rangers that often find themselves hovering in the air or have built their javelin suit to benefit from hovering in the air for quite a while. But it increases all other weapon damage as you hover, such as if you have a Devastator sniper rifle, you will do even more damage with that weapon just because you have Avenging Herald on your person. Not to mention that you can stack these. So you can get two Avenging Heralds on your person and increase your damage by 400%. It's ridiculous. Some are even arguing that there's no reason to use any other weapon than the Avenging Herald. So certainly if you get this, be very glad and hopefully you get a good best in slot for it too. To go over the other Heavy Pistol Masterworks, we have Glorious Result, which is the one where hitting weak points will increase all of your weapon damage for 10 seconds by 150%. This is one weapon that I don't have myself, but speaking to other people, apparently it hits very hard. As in its damage output per shot is only beaten by some sniper rifles when you proc the weak point damage. And it's quite easy to proc weak point damage on a lot of bosses for example and just hitting headshots so if you've got good aim you'll be able to get a lot of good use out of this weapon in particular. But using glorious result whilst having Avenging Herald holstered in the other weapon slot means that you are increasing your damage by another 200% when you hover. So certainly combining both of these heavy pistols will allow you to get a lot of damage in per shot. So yeah, a really good one, especially if you're not building around a hover build. Close Encounter, where if you dash, it increases your weapon damage. Here, I'm making the assumption that this perk only works for this weapon and doesn't work when you have this weapon holstered. But it's still pretty good as well. This of course would be good for interceptors if they have a melee build or a ranger melee build. This particular dash doesn't stack at all, but pairing this with close quarters combat, and abilities that have to be melee ranged, like the Tempest Strike, I can definitely see this weapon being used in a lot of builds properly. It's got the worst damage out of the three heavy pistols, but fires a lot faster because of it. It's just generally really good for close quarters. But out of the three, Avenging Herald is the best by far. Going on to the machine pistols. We have Unending Battle, where if you hit an enemy elite or higher at a point blank range with this weapon, it increases weapon and melee damage by 110% for 5 seconds. Unending Battle, in terms of damage and fire rate, is the middle of the pack again. But this is really, really good for interceptors, melee builds that you might want to run. We then have Vasa Surprise, where striking an enemy with a melee attack will restore ammo, where on a melee hit, you will gain 25% ammo in the magazine back, which I don't really see a good amount of point in. Like if you're making a build based around doing as much melee damage as you can, you ideally want damage increase when you melee or getting armor and health back. But ammo I don't see being used a lot unless you are using these weapons quite frequently and you find yourself running out of ammo quite a lot. It's certainly a unique perk but I'm looking at it thinking I don't think I'm ever going to have a use for it which kind of sucks. Then finally in the machine pistols we have Retaliation of Goretus. 
or Goritas, where when your suit health declines, your weapon damage increases by 125% for 10 seconds. Now, I believe this is when you're low health, going over other masterwork perks that I have on components that do very similar things. This isn't a case of when you take damage, this effect applies but more when you're on low health, that's when it starts working. So I'd say it's good for javelins that want to fight at long range to an extent. I think if you're building a melee build and you're on low health, it isn't ideal to have this kind of perk that almost makes you want to play more recklessly and try to do as much damage as possible. I feel like it's just going to get you killed a lot of the time. These other weapon masterwork perks do the same, but in a much safer way. Does that make sense? I think all of these weapons in this slot though do provide a lot to the table. Retaliation of Garata does do the most damage too. So if you find yourself playing a much more aggressive style and just being on low health a lot of the time but still surviving, then this weapon might be quite good for you. But I really like unending battle, and when I start making melee builds, especially for the interceptor, I very much want this kind of weapon. Going on to the assault rifles, we have elemental rage, where hitting elite enemies increases all elemental damage by 5% for 10 seconds, and this stacks to 20. So it increases all elemental damage that this enemy takes by 100%, which is really good for priming builds if you're running a lot of stuff that sets fire to the target, does acid damage, and really good for facing bosses because you're constantly going to be able to prime with other abilities, I imagine, but also just increasing the amount of elemental damage that these guys take. Where if you're running this with a storm buddy or as a storm yourself, that increases all of your damage by 100% because all of your abilities have elemental effects one way or the other. This is really good for situations where it's also hard to combo too. And I think there's a lot of different weapons that add fire explosions or set targets on fire. This is just an all round really good one to increase damage as a whole, no matter who you're playing with, no matter on what character you're on. So honestly, Elemental Rage is pretty good if you get it. It does the least damage. It doesn't have an amazing fire rate too. So it is a bit lackluster in the actual DPS department, but this effect might not look like much, but I feel it's gonna add a lot when making specific builds. Roundless Blaze, which ignites a target when you're on a hit streak. You hit a target five times with this weapon, you will set them on fire and you will prime them. I haven't had this weapon myself, but looking on Reddit, it seems to be the case for this. This is really good for builds where you might have, say, really good masterwork detonating abilities on your two gear slots, right? You don't really have a good priming ability to go alongside them, so you don't run one. Well, this weapon could prime your enemies for you. Not only that, out of all of the other assault rifles, Roundless Blaze does the most damage. So not only does it hit for a lot, it also sets your targets on fire, doing ticking damage, and also priming targets for combos. So this is a really, really good masterwork perk. And I really like weapons that do this because it means that you don't need to run abilities that prime targets. You could just go all out with explosive ammunition and detonating them. It's also really easy to prime targets with weapons. We'll talk about another weapon down the line that I have that does a similar thing. But yeah, this weapon is really good. And I certainly would recommend picking it up and trying to sort of weave it into a rotation if you definitely get it. And then of course we have Divine Vengeance. I've seen Arik's putting up a video on this in particular because it is very good. Every third weak point hit that you have causes large fire explosions. Explosions. So if you hit a headshot or a weak point on an enemy or boss, you'll do explosive damage to this target. It's hard to say how much damage these explosions do per hit, but it seems like a good amount. Like 5 times your bullet damage, 10 times your bullet damage, it does depend on your build. If you're stacking for fire damage, then of course you'll do more damage with this. And considering that some weak points on bosses like the Swarm Tyrant, as I mentioned, just hitting those Venom Sacks is relatively easy to do. That is a lot of damage if you use this weapon properly. So all of the Assault Rifle Masterwork perks are really good, to be honest. And all of them have very unique effects. It's really difficult to work out which of these is best, as they all do really interesting things. Divine Vengeance is the most simplistic raw damage approach. If you have inscriptions, stats, or components that increase your fire damage, then it makes this stronger, so definitely run that. Or you just have a build for explosive damage, because I feel that this technically counts. Roundless Blaze is really good for priming targets. It sets targets on fire without you needing to dedicate to abilities and wait for cooldowns. You just keep firing this weapon and eventually you will set them on fire. Don't need to hit weak points, you just shoot them. So really good for building around combos for sure. And then Elemental Rage, where hitting elite enemies increases damage stacks. Just really good for utility. Whilst you don't do a lot of damage yourself, you're increasing the amount of elemental damage that the enemy will take. Really good for bosses, might not be too good for anything else. Marksman Rifles. 
Let's look at the Soothing Touch first, where scoring a hit temporarily reduces your recoil by 50%. It also stacks to 3, and it happens for 5 seconds. We go from some really good masterwork perks to a really pretty bad one. This is a Maxman Rifle. Like, recoil reduction on a light machine gun would be fine, because they fire sporadically, and the longer that you fire, they tend to go a bit more crazy, right? But for a Maxman Rifle, it's built on having accuracy, and not only that, Soothing Touch has the slowest RPM out of the Maxman Rifles. This just seems really dull and dumb in comparison. This is certainly one that I think just flat out needs changing. A Soothing Touch might be the worst one in the game. There might be some aspect of it that I don't quite understand that makes it really good, but on the face of it, I'm just not seeing it. Death from above, it increases weak point damage by 65% whilst you're hovering. We've highlighted a similar masterwork perk like this, and it's very much the same case. But instead of just increasing your damage outright by 200%, this one increases weak point damage. There is another sniper rifle called Wyvern Blitz that does a very similar thing, but this perk also applies when you have this weapon holstered. So you don't even need to use this weapon and you still make use of the pretty good perk that it has. Stacking this with other weapons that increase your damage whilst you're hovering would mean that you do a lot of damage. It's just not very exciting, I suppose. And finally, Thunderbolts of Euvenia. I saw Mtash talking about this in another video. Very similar to Divine Vengeance, where you have a 33% chance to deal large electric damage, much like the fire explosive damage one does a significant amount of explosive damage when it procs. So if you have electric damage increasing components, it doesn't prime or detonate a target though, it just does explosive damage, much like Divine Vengeance, but it does a lot of damage. If I had to choose which one's best, I would say Thunderbolt of Yuvinia. It's pretty rad, pretty good on its own. Death from Above is good in principle, but again, not that exciting. A couple of other masterwork weapons have this perk and are a little bit better damage-wise, and Seaving Touch is just bad. Like I said, there might be something about this that makes it good, but I'm just not seeing it, and I've seen people on Reddit say the same thing. It just doesn't make too much sense. So for light machine guns, we have Renewed Courage, where the last shot reduces your recoil by 50% for the next 20 seconds, and it stacks twice. It's a pretty lame perk, and it sounds really clunky to use. Again, people on Reddit complaining that it was just hard to make the use of it. It is more applicable than Soothing Touch, because this weapon is an LMG with the highest RPM of this slot, but the damage is also the worst, and therefore it just comes off as a bit unimpressive. I don't think that recoil should be an exciting masterwork perk. So it would be nice to see both of these change to something that's just a little bit more exciting in general because some of these other masterwork perks are really cool but recoil man is just not that exciting or interesting and i wouldn't recommend it we then go on to atinia's gambit this one's an exciting one when you reload it detonates a combo explosion in the immediate area now this sounds pretty cool the fact that you can prime a target and you reloading will detonate that but from what i've seen from other people it sounds really awkward to use it because you need to be point blank next to the target to cause that explosion so it would be nice that this explosion basically happens to where you're looking on your reticle with this weapon right but it sounds like that's not the case that you need to be stood right next to the target to detonate that explosion because it happens just around you instead of from a distance so this is one that could do with a little bit of reworking to make it like that but i do like this idea a lot and this is what masterwork perks should be like just absolutely stupid stuff like this and then we have the cycle of pain where weak point hits increase weapon rate of fire by 10 percent for 10 seconds and it stacks up to 10 times i have this weapon i tried out for a bit you've seen some of the gameplay on screen it actually feels pretty fun to use it boils down to when you hit headshots or hit weak points you fire faster and thus doing more damage per second and this is for the light machine gun that does the most damage per round but fires the least rounds per minute so it hits hard but it hits slower so this increase in speed makes it really strong. The issue that I have with it is the fact that you just kind of piss away all of your ammo, really. You don't get an extended magazine size or ammo clip, and I just kept running out of bullets, which I haven't had for any other weapon, really. So it's good at just mowing down targets like bosses that have a lot of health, but it just eats up all of your ammo reserves. But going through each of these and which is best, Cyclopin is just really good for raw damage output. Atini's Gambit is cool in principle, but might be awkward to make it work. And Renewed Courage, just because of the recoil stuff, just seems bland and uninteresting. Now we go into the sniper rifles, and these are pretty exciting. We have the Wyvern Blitz, where when you hover, your weapon weak point damage increases by 40%. This one keeps cropping up, it seems. Different weapons having a similar perk, but increases various different amounts of damage. 
But for a sniper rifle, that means that it's a lot of damage. The Y vent doesn't do as much damage as one of the other sniper rifles, and it's very much in the middle of the park. But again, stacking this with Avenging Herald to increase your hovering damage means that your sniper rifle now can do a whole lot more, but maybe not as much as Truth of Tarsus. This is the Master Whip version of the Devastator, you know, the charge up shot one that does explosive damage that everybody loved from the demo. Well, hitting weak points with this weapon on prime targets will set off a chain combo. So I don't know if this technically detonates that combo. You can't really go wrong with this weapon, like at all. So definitely running Truth of Tarsus with Avenging Herald to increase your damage whilst you're hovering means that that charged up sniper shot is going to do damage close to 20 to 30,000 maybe. Of course, the fact that you only have one shot in your magazine so you have to reload every time you shoot is kind of annoying to mix it a drag, but it can still do a lot for you. And the fact that detonates combos is really strong. For example, imagine that on the Ranger where you do even more damage when detonating a combo. So this weapon is a complete monster, but it's not 100% pick all of the time. You need to be smart with how you use it. And then you also have Siege Breaker, where on a hit streak of three, you freeze the target. I have this one, much like Ralner's Blaze, when you hit a target consecutively, you will freeze them and it primes the target. So again, really good at just putting an effect onto a boss, clearing up adds just to make sure that they're frozen quickly without dedicating abilities or ultimates to prime a target. You can just do it with your weapon and this almost acts like an assault rifle, to be honest. It is a sniper rifle, but it does a lot less damage than the other sniper rifles in this class, but the rate of fire is significantly better as you're seeing on screen. I really like this weapon. I think it's really good to build around but other sniper rifles act like sniper rifles, I suppose. So again, really difficult to choose between them because all of them provide some really cool stuff. The only issue with Siege Breaker is the fact that it has quite a small magazine size. So you do find yourself reloading quite a bit. So you need to be smart with how you use your ammo reserves. I think it's definitely a case of Truth of Tarsus versus Siege Breaker though, just the damage that Truth of Tarsus can do versus the utility and priming aspects that Siege Breaker can bring being able to freeze targets. And considering that freezing targets is really strong, makes it a good weapon. Next up we have the shotguns, we start with Radiant Fortress, where hitting 8 shots in a single burst recharges shield by 35%. Radiant Fortress out of the other shotguns does the most damage, has the slowest fire rate but is also the most accurate, so it's really good for those builds where you want the shotgun to be a shotgun. Melee builds being really close and certainly as a ranger or an interceptor where you're constantly going down low on health, being that close hitting the target and getting some of your shields back is particularly strong I'd say. So it's not the best for everyone but if you're running a build that sounds like it should be that then this shotgun is definitely for you. We of course have Papa Pump which most of you know by now where reloading increases force and delivers bonus damage of 150% for 5 seconds which stacks twice. It is definitely a strong weapon but it's also kind of awkward to use because when you reload that's when your damage increases so you then have to awkwardly quickly get into fights but it's really good if you want to be in amongst the action the force aspect of this weapon is also really strong it means that you can stun targets such as bosses and you know stun them out from whatever they're trying to do so really good for keeping elite mobs under check I felt that I often properly couldn't really utilize it therefore I was missing out a lot on damage it's definitely strong in the right hands if you can form a playstyle that works around on this then you will do a lot of damage but it certainly felt clunky that's the main thing it was really awkward to make it work but it is a very strong weapon and finally rolling carnage where dashing temporarily increases your damage by 50 percent for 20 seconds and it stacks three times so this is amazing for the interceptor because you could triple dash and increase your damage for 20 seconds with this weapon for 150 percent it only works for this weapon it doesn't increase damage for anything else but that's still a lot of damage on a weapon that does the least dps but has a two shot round so very good for the interceptor who doesn't intend to stick around for too long really really good. Now we go onto the auto cannons, which the Colossus can use, nobody else can. We start with a Fist of Stral, where hitting enemies increases your weapon damage by 10% for 5 seconds, and that stacks 10 times. So really this is just the best for raw damage output. You don't need to do much, all you need to do is hit targets, and you will increase your damage by 100% just a really good DPS option. And considering that this weapon has the fastest RPM out of the autocannon, so probably the fastest RPM in the game, that damage increase makes it one of the hardest hitting abilities full stop. The last stand, 
When suit health declines, all weapon damage increases by 75% for 10 seconds. This is much like another weapon that we highlighted in the past, but because it's the Colossus, you often are on low health a good amount of the time. So if you find yourself playing the Thick Boy and being low on health but still surviving, I think you're going to like this weapon quite a lot. It does middle of the pack damage, but as I said, if you're low on health constantly, then it's a good pickup for you. And then Endless Siege, which has a boring masterwork, but a really, really strong one. It increases your magazine size by 100% and also increases your damage by 100%. The Endless Siege did the most damage out of all of the other auto cannons, and now it's going to do a whole lot more. The fact that you also have a bigger magazine size means that you can fire for a lot longer too. We could try and work out the DPS difference between the Fist and Endless Siege. I think that the last and having to be on low health to do more damage just isn't worth it when you have these other weapons that just increase your damage full stop for doing very little, you know? So Fist Astral versus Endless Siege, a topic for another day when it comes to damage, but there's no doubt that both of these output just a metric ton of DPS. Now we go onto the grenade launchers again, only the Colossus can use these. These are a bit more awkward to explain because each of the grenades have different ways that they work. We'll start with Sentinel's Vengeance. It detonates an acid effect on a small hit streak. This is probably very similar to Thunderbolt of Yuvinia and Divine Vengeance with their fire and electric explosions, but for acid for this weapon. This is the most straightforward grenade launcher to use. The sticky grenades, they explode on impact once they're stuck to a target, you know, and fire a lot quicker than the other ones. So I think it is the best. It just seems the easiest to use out of all of the grenade launchers, so you can't really go wrong. Insult and injury, defeating an enemy clear status effects and boosts effect resistance. This is the one where the grenades bounce on the floor. It's good for team utility, but it isn't good for fighting bosses like titans or bosses in strongholds, as it requires you to kill an enemy in order to proc this, right? So because of that, you don't get an awful lot of use out of it. So it's not that good in comparison. Then Balm of Gavinicus, these are the ones where you detonate the mines manually, which is a little bit awkward. Where hitting two enemies with your grenades restores 25% of your armor. So really good for tanky Colossus boys. I haven't played an awful lot with manual detonators myself, so I haven't really played with the Lurker Grenade Launcher. But if you're used to playing with them, then definitely go for this. It seems like it's a good shout. But they are all 27 Masterwork weapons in the game. Some are better than others. My feedback is... Which weapons do I recommend looking out for? Avenging Herald, for sure. Roundless Blaze is a lot of fun, as is Siegebreaker. Divine Vengeance and Thunder Lord of Yuvinia do similar things, but there are a lot of masterwork weapons that do need changing. Soothing Touch and Renewed Courage just sound boring with their recoil effect. So I hope that Bioware do look at these and maybe change them to be a bit more exciting. But let me know which are your favorite weapons. If I got anything wrong in this video, then do let me know in the comments too. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.